Hi there, this is N7TFP, and this is another how-to ham radio tutorial video. This video will focus on the HF bands for new general and amateur extra operators. So if you've just gotten your general or your amateur extra license, and are now uh, able to operate on the HF bands, first off, congratulations on passing your exam, and second, welcome aboard because there's a lot of exciting things happening on HF. Most of you probably know that HF is a lot different than VHF and UHF, like two meters and such. The first big difference about HF is that there aren't really very many repeaters. There are some repeaters on 10 meters and quite a few on 6 meters, even though 6 meters isn't technically considered an HF band. But when you go down onto 80 meters and 40 meters and 160 meters, you almost never find repeaters because they're not really needed. And here's why. The biggest difference between VHF, UHF, and HF is line of sight communications. VHF and UHF, for the most part, rely on line of sight communications, except in some very unusual circumstances, and things like moon bounce, or satellite operations, or repeater operations. They all rely on line of sight communication to function between you and the station that you're talking to. HF is different. HF doesn't necessarily require line of sight because we can skip our signals off a layer of the uh, Earth's ionosphere and bounce them around the Earth to get to where we want to talk to. Now, bouncing these signals over the horizon is a little bit complicated, and just exactly how this works is beyond the scope of this video, but the ARRL has uh, lots of publications which go into more detail about uh, the science behind uh, the skip of radio waves in the ionosphere. But the basic idea is that the sun ionizes these layers, and depending on what layer it is, um, and the time of day, and the, you know, the portion of the solar cycle that we're currently in, will determine first how well signals are bounced on the ionosphere, and second, which uh, kind of range of signals are uh, able to uh, be bounced back to Earth through the ionosphere. Now there are quite a few factors that we need to consider when determining how well or even if our signal will be able to be bounced off the ionosphere. The first thing is the time of day. The, uh, the lit part of the ionosphere that's behind the Earth from the Sun, which is you know, in the dark, is, uh, it behaves differently than the, the uh, part of the ionosphere which can see the Sun and receives the Sun's uh, radiation. So um, daytime and nighttime communications uh, on the HF bands are drastically different. So to begin our, uh, our uh, kind of exploration of the HF bands, I'd like to start with a very, very common HF band. This is the 20 meter band. So 14295, that's a frequency right in the middle of the 20 meter band. And a 20 meter band for general class operators uh, goes from 14.225 megahertz up to 14.35 megahertz. Now, if you're an amateur extra or an advanced class operator, these frequency ranges are a little bit different. So make sure you have a band plan handy so that you can figure out exactly what your legal limits are in terms of operating range. It's 1.30 in the afternoon here on a uh, cold December rainy day in the Pacific Northwest. But uh, conditions are relatively good. Uh, we have uh, a station here. Let's see where he is. Mm, it's a little hard to copy him. I'm going to tune around a little bit in the uh, band here and see if we can find someone that's easier to pick out. Well, this station that we're listening to right here is down there, as you just heard, uh, in San Diego. The 20 meter band, primarily uh, used during the daytime, and uh, and you're not going to have a whole lot of success during the nighttime when we're in the lull of the uh, solar cycle, which is uh, about an 11, 12 year 
kind of cycle. However, when the solar cycle, when we're up at the top and, and performance around the world is good, the 20 meter band can be open uh, through the nighttime. And uh, it's a pretty uh, kind of general use, real stable. Uh, and uh, during the daytime, you can get some uh, really, really, really good long distance contacts. Um, we're going to take a break now and we're going to go look at the 80 meter band. All right, well, we're down here uh, on the 80 meter band, kind of more close to the low end of the amateur radio spectrum. The only band that goes below the 80 meter band in the United States is the 160 meter band, which is down around uh, 2 megahertz uh, in this range. And unfortunately, I can't really give you a very good demonstration of these bands at this time because it's about 1.45 in the afternoon, and uh, unfortunately, these bands just don't work at this location uh, during the daytime. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of science behind why that is and why we can't use these bands during the, uh, during the daytime for long-distance communications, but again, like I said, that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video since this is just a kind of brief introduction. Um, perhaps uh, you'll get the opportunity to get on the 80 meter band sometime uh, during the evening or early, early in the morning, but uh, most likely at night when performance is good. And uh, we'll try to do a video of uh, nighttime HF, HF operations in the near future. Um, but again, here we're on 80 meter band. Uh, the frequency for general class operators is uh, 3.8 to 4 megahertz. Uh, again, that's just for voice operation. There's another band for digital and Morse code um, operations. But uh, we'll tune across real quick and just see if we hear anything. I doubt it, but never, uh, it's always worth just trying because you never know what will happen. That's the other thing is ham radio isn't entirely predictable. Let me switch uh, antennas. And we'll go to the long antenna for 80 meters. There we go, now we have a little more activity. Well, it doesn't look like there's much going on right now in the middle of the daytime. However, sometimes you can use 80 meters and 160 meters for local, uh, local communications, kind of like line of sight. Um, you know, something that doesn't require bouncing a signal off the ionosphere. Uh, those can work during the daytime, and it's not uncommon to hear local nets on these frequencies during the day. Well, that about wraps up our uh, examination of 80 meters. Well, I hope that uh, looking at these two bands and kind of giving an idea of what you can do during the nighttime and what you can do during the daytime has uh, sparked your interest a little bit. And I encourage you, go out there, build a dipole. Start with something simple. Get yourself on the air. Make a couple CQ calls. And uh, who knows what you'll get. So, good luck. If you have any more questions, uh, run over to my website or send me an email. I'd be happy to help you out. If you leave questions in the comment box below, I'll do my best to get to those. And uh, Have a great time on HF, and uh, look for more of my uh, ham radio how-to videos. 73s.